In this video, we're going to take a look how we could improve our user experience by adding form validation with Zod. Currently, if you take a look at our form, if I randomly type random characters and click sign in, nothing happens. And the reason this happens is because we're not validating our form inputs. So let's take a look how we could accomplish that. By the way, this video has a complimentary blog post that you could check out to see all the code snippets that I'll be using in this lecture. You can find it in the link in the description below. We are going to be using Zod. It's an amazing library that makes doing validation much easier. You could navigate to basic usage to see how it works. But what we're going to do, we're going to define an object schema that's going to have structure of our object with some basic validation. Then we're going to validate our form using the schema. So let's take a look how we could accomplish this in code. In my Strapi project, first thing I'm going to do is open my terminal, making sure that you're in the front end, and go ahead, run yarn add zod. This is going to install the library that we're going to use. We could close the terminal. Once everything installed, let's navigate to our source folder, our data, and we're going to go inside our actions. We're going to navigate into our auth slash action.ts file. Here in the top, we're going to import our zod library. We know that we have our username, and our password and our email. So let's create a basic schema that we're going to call schema register that's going to show the structure of our object and the requirements for validation. So for username, we expect a string to be minimum between three to 20 characters. We're doing something similar for the password. And for the email, we just checking if it's a string and if it's an email. You could learn more about other methods available to you on the Zod documentation. Once we have our schema, let's go ahead and test it out. We're going to say const validated fields is going to equal our schema that we just created. If you take a look at the methods, we have save parse available to us. This is what we're going to use. We're going to pass in an object, and that object is going to contain our form data that we're getting from our form. Now we could check if validate field is successful, we could do if validate field dot success. And here we're going to return previous state. And then we're going to create a key called Zod errors, which is going to contain our Zod errors. So we're going to say validated fields dot error. And we have a helpful method called flatten. And we're going to flatten all the field errors, fantastic. And then we're going to return a message that's going to say missing fields failed to register, perfect. We could delete this since we're not using it anymore. And here in the final return statement, we're just gonna say previous state and for data, we're just gonna return okay for now. So quick recap, we imported Zod, we defined a schema to structure our validation for our user password and email. Then we went ahead, used our schema by running safe parse, and then we are able to use our validated fields. If it's not successful, we're going to return our Zod errors, and otherwise we're just gonna return our previous state with okay. Now let's navigate back to our form. So going to components, forms, and sign up form. Here we're going to update our initial state because now we have our data. I'm just going to set this to null. Then we have our sad errors, which is null. And then we have our message, which is null. So before getting too far ahead, let's just console log our form state and see if we're getting the errors. So on the front end of our application, if we take a look, our current initial state, we have data null, message null, sad errors null. I'm not gonna enter anything in the fields. I'm just gonna click sign up. Notice now we're getting our object back, which has our data null, our message missing fields fail to register, and it shows the errors. So for email, please enter valid email, password and username. You could see that it expects a string of a certain length. So now that we know that we're getting our error, let's go ahead and modify our form to render our field error messages underneath each field. 
In the article that's in the link in the description below, you're going to find this Zod errors component. We're going to go ahead and use it. So go ahead and copy it and inside your code editor, navigate to source components custom and let's create a new file and we're going to call it Zod errors.tsx and we're going to paste in our code. All it does is just going to parse the response we're getting and show our amazing error. So now we could go ahead and use it. So in our sign up form, let's go ahead and first import our Zod errors. So after the input labels here, I'm going to say import. Let's go ahead, Zod errors. And that's going to be coming from our components, custom Zod errors. And now we are able to use it. So scrolling down to our first field, our input field, right underneath, we're going to say Zod errors. And it takes a error prop and we get the errors returned from our server action using our from state. And we're just saying, go ahead, get the Zod errors with the username. And we're going to do the same thing for our input, for our emails. So let's go ahead and do it here. And finally, we're going to do the same thing for our password. Gotta love VS Code when it is able to take context of your application and actually give you valid suggestions. So now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and check out our form. So now inside our front end application, when I click sign up, I should see our errors being returned from our server action, which is pretty cool. Now that we know that our form validation works in the next section, we're going to go ahead and take a look how to authenticate or create users with our Strapi backend. If you want to learn more, you could check out the link in our documentation. And here you could read more about how Strapi handles authentication and registration, something we're going to use in the next section. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.